Jay Gabler, Duluth News Tribune arts and entertainment reporter, here with another special episode of the DNT Minute featuring my column, Front Row Seat. We are bringing Book Month at Front Row Seat to an end this week with a column about a new book from a Duluth author on the topic of climate grief. In mid-June, I went on a sunrise paddleboard tour through the Duluth Ship Canal. The forecast was clear of rain clouds, but still, I couldn't see the sunrise. The sky above Lake Superior was choked with wildfire smoke, and the photos I took for a feature about my summer day in Duluth showed the city enveloped in an eerie haze. I considered discarding the photos and trying again on a more representative summer day, but then I realized the photos are not, in fact, entirely unrepresentative. While such thick smoke is still thankfully rare, it would be false to assure people heading out on the harbor that a visible amount of wildfire haze is uncharacteristic of what we might now experience on any given summer morning in Duluth. Walking around the city that day, even as I tried to focus on the people and places I was seeing, I found myself distracted by mourning for the Northland of my childhood, where I only saw the sunrise through a soupy haze when watching movies about smoggy coastal cities. Sean Weaver said, Contrary to all of the magazines that say we're a climate refuge, I don't think, scientifically speaking, that's actually where we're headed. The Laurentian forest that we live in is one of the most fragile ecosystems in the world. We're also on the lake that is heating up among the fastest of all the lakes around the world. Weaver was speaking at Bent Paddle Brewing, a company that prides itself on craft beverages made with pure water from Lake Superior. The best thing that we all can do, said Weaver, is protecting our water fiercely. It's not just for us locally, it's for the whole world. The event was a Monday evening release event for the Duluth author's new book, Climate Grief, From Coping to Resilience and Action. It draws on Weaver's years of experience in research and therapy around how people cope on a personal level with the reality of climate change. There's a lot for academics and scientists, and there's a lot for sort of a psycho-spiritual perspective of grief, said Weaver about previous writing on the subject. But there's not a lot out there for most people who are just realizing what climate change actually feels like emotionally. For many of us, climate change has been something we've processed more in our heads than in our hearts. The term evokes facts and figures, charts and diagrams. A hot day, circa 2023, still feels the same as it did back when I was riding my banana seat Schwinn down to Tisher Creek. To understand this summer's heat in the context of our changing climate, I need to check the stats. Sooner or later, though, it hits you. Our natural world is never again going to be the way it used to be, certainly not in our lifetimes. While Weaver's book acknowledges the grief involved with taking that in, it's also a hopeful volume containing strategies for processing those emotions and taking concrete actions to help the situation. We are always grieving. There's always a big G or little g grief in our lives that we're working through, said Weaver on Monday. With climate change, it's a big G, and it's so big, it's something that is at a scale we don't experience with other things that we're grieving. Weaver is active locally as a musician and teacher serving as program director of the Music Resource Center at Duluth's Armory Arts and Music Center. With renovations to the Armory building still pending additional funds, the Music Resource Center currently conducts programming at Sacred Heart. Students she's worked with, said Weaver, are dealing with climate grief a lot better and more assertively than most adults do. Her Duluth music students, she said, really inspire me and they remind me of how important it is for all of us to do whatever we can because they're stuck with what we do, good and bad. Singer-songwriter Mary Bew, a friend of Weaver's for over a decade, performed at the book event, first solo and later with Weaver accompanying her on violin and vocals. Bew, a former Duluthian, said she was playing her first local show in a couple years. Gonna get right to the point here, this is an apocalyptic song, but Shauna offers a lot of hope, said Bew, before playing an original song about a storm. In the book's introduction, Weaver straightaway dismisses the idea that climate grief is something that can be healed in a conventional sense. Climate grief is not a pathology, she writes, but a reasonable, rational response to living in an increasingly unstable environment. The keys to coping with climate grief, the book suggests, are understanding its very real causes and learning to process the emotion in an honest, constructive manner. 
The uncertainties don't go away, and ignoring them won't produce health or real contentment, Weaver writes. Well-being comes by balancing stressors with sources of joy, inner turmoil with a core source of peace. Bew, who wrote the book's foreword and led a question-and-answer session with Weaver between sets, called the book extremely helpful and hopeful in this depressing time. Sales were strong Monday at a table Weaver shared with artist Melissa Weiser, who created the painting featured on the cover of Climate Grief. Outside the brewery, the Mama Roots food truck provided vegan eats. Weaver herself is vegan, which comes up in the chapter, Where Do We Go From Here? Mindful eating, she writes, is one of the ways to focus on our responsibility to the world around us. A plant-based diet is better environmentally because it takes out the middle consumer, other animals, Weaver writes. Choosing to eat foods that will best feed yourself and the planet is a constant but empowering exercise, and one that gets easier as you go along. A recurring theme of the book is that neither denial nor despair will help the planet or ourselves. With any source of grief, be it a loved one's death, a medical prognosis, an ambiguous relationship, or now climate change, knowing as many facts as possible helps us to grieve and cope, Weaver writes. She also counsels self-care, participating in anything that is a joyful experience to do, she told Bew. Practicing what she preached, Weaver later took up her violin and joined her friend on several songs. As the two performed, an early autumn sunset cut through the clouds, a first glimmer after days of hard rain, and slanted over the heads of the packed audience in the cozy tap room. I think it's easy for us to feel like if we don't do enough, then we give up and don't do anything, Weaver told the crowd. The world really has changed over and over again by people doing small things. That's this week's column. I'll be back next week with a column about how Visit Duluth, that is the group of agencies and people tasked with bringing people to visit our fair city, is delving into a new type of storytelling about important people here in Duluth. Until then, I'm Jay Gabler, Duluth News Tribune.